Good evening. Um, my name is uh, Tim Brocks. I'm the uh, Vice President of uh, Program for the Sequoia Council uh, Boy Scouts of America. Welcome to a um, webinar to discuss um, some aspects of our training uh, this evening. The uh, purpose of the uh, webinar today is to review the new uh, Cub Scout Adventure Program, to hear uh, from the leaders at Cub Scout Day Camp to find out what exciting opportunities there is for your um, unit at Camp Chewanakee and then to be discussing some uh, opportunities for uh, youth leadership, adult training, and these, these are all the items that we'll discuss tonight. These are items which we hope will be helpful to uh, all of our leaders in our council. There is uh, at the end uh, a time for questions. The, uh, there'll be a, uh, both a opportunity to email questions and the software that you're signed in on should also allow for submission of questions. If we don't answer the uh, question tonight, um, the, uh, there will be an email that you can send um, the questions to. Uh, furthermore, you can contact any of us or the uh, council office and lastly, for those people who have missed this, there'll be an opportunity to um, review the, uh, the webinar in a recorded form. Uh, with this, um, I'm going to turn the uh, time over to Allison Moon, who is going to uh, discuss with us the uh, new Cub Scout Adventure program. As Allison uh, does this, uh, some of her slides got lost in the, ether, in the ethers of the Internet. So please uh, uh, bear with uh, Allison, and she will have um, uh, lots of good information for us. All right, so this is Allison Moon, and I'm going to talk about our new Cub Scouting program. The adventure begins June 1st. Are you ready to join us? This is going to move a little bit fast, and we're going to go over some highlights only. There will be a website link at the end, so no worries. You don't have to worry about taking a lot of notes. All the information will be on the website. The Cub Scouts of 2015 are not the Cub Scouts of 1960. Our program needed to change and to keep up with our boys. BSA started this program update with its youngest Scouts, Boy Scouts. Are you ready for the change? It's rolling uphill this time. Now, I've got two hints that you will not find on the website. As a leader, if you are currently trained, you are good to go. The online training syllabus will be updated in June to reflect all the changes, so you can re refresh if you like. Now, if you're not trained, get it done and get it done now. Now, number two, the second hint we learned at Philmont when we were playing with the new program. The exercises uncovered that we needed both a copy of the DIN leader copy of the manual and a copy of the Cub manual for each rank when we were planning our DIN meetings. For example, if I'm a bear DIN leader, I need a copy of the DIN leader manual and I need a copy of the bear Cub manual. There's information in both that's unique and I need both copies if I'm a DIN leader. Now, advancement. It's been simplified. Gone are the beads, the arrow points, and the belt loops. The best of the best have been infused into the program. Exciting adventures are in store for us. Six to find for tiger through bears, one elective with duty and God adventures. The belt loops are going to be available for $1.39 each. Weeblows and the arrow of light rank now. Those pins are going to be $1.89. That program offers a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more electives for the boys to choose from. What you need to do now is you need to come down, you need to get your books from Daphne, and you need to become familiar with your program. You need to plan your calendars out, and you need to start maybe with some electives over this summer and get familiar with your program. You need to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. This new program is a little bit more go-see, more service projects, more camping. Get these new books and get yourself familiar with your new program. These changes in the program are focusing on 
five new areas, character development, which is points of the scout oath and law and duty to God, citizenship, which are focusing on more active citizenship service projects, personal fitness, no more just rolling and frog walks, we're going to be working on physical fitness a little bit more actively. Your outdoor skills, we're going to learn the outdoor code and the outdoor ethics. And we're going to introduce our scouts to the six essentials of hiking. Leadership skills and life skills for Cub Scouts. Those 10 to foot scout requirements are moving down to the Cub Scout ranks. Scout Masters, here's your notice. Cub Scouts are stepping up on the trail and coming your way ready to lead. They're going to be active citizens and leaders aware of the patrol method, outdoor ethics, and they're going to have a grasp of the scout oath and law, and they're going to adventure troops ready to go on the scout trail. Now, this new program starts June 1st. You should be finishing up their ranks in the old program as closely as you can, and the Weeblos are the only one who should have the option to finish their Air of Lights in the old program. Now, each chartered organization in this transition period has the option to do what's best for their boys. Online, there is transition documents, both for traditional units and LDS units. You need to go online and you need to make these um, documents available to your units and you need to read them and you need to become familiar with them and do what's best for your boys during this transition period. Now, summary of the changes. What we know and love about Cub Scouting is still available to us. It's a family focus. It's still age appropriate for our boys. Bobcat is still the first rank. Den and pack meetings are still the same. It's still an outdoor emphasis, and our delivery model is still the same. Changing, okay, we lost our Cub Scout oath, but we're moving to the Scout oath and law. We can learn to love it too. Our Tiger Cub, they're roaring into a Tiger rank. They're going to learn to love that. The activities are becoming more active, and our boys are that way. They're going to be more engaged. We're going to love this. The advancement's more simplified. And one DIN leader guide per rank. We don't have to buy an assortment of all. We can just buy what we need. These are all good changes that we can all embrace and love. The methods are not changing of scouting. They're just making lateral changes and lateral moves that unify us as scouters. There's revisions to advancement. We're moving to the one oath and one law. And our character to connections are moving to the, scout, the points of the scout law. This is a great new program with great new materials and a grand new adventure that all covers can unite and join together. Now, I promised you a website. This website, this is what you're going to need to write down. It's www.scouting.org forward slash program updates. That's www scouting.org forward slash program updates. Now, at this website, you will find monthly updates. It's full of PDFs of transitional documents for both traditional and LDS units. It'll have the most up-to-date information. National is printing there. Roundtable every month is also another place for you to go to get the most up-to-date information. You'll have um, the monthly themes of, uh, for your PAC meetings and the new points of the Scout Law. This is where you need to go for your information. Plan your adventure. Have fun with your boys. Look forward to your new program. Good evening. I am Carol Strobel, and I am the Council Day Camp Chair, and I am very excited to talk to you all this evening about Cub Scout Day Camp in 2015. The Council is offering seven Cub Scout Day Camps this year, including two LDS camps. Um, those LDS camps would be the North Stake and the Fresno East Stake. The camps that are offered this year are the Live Oak District Day Camp in Visalia at Mooney Grove Park, 
Those, that will be on June 15th through 19th from 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And the cost for that one is $70. The Thunderbird District is being held at the Madera LDS Chapel. And the dates for that camp are also June 15th through 19th. That's also a morning camp from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the cost there is $65. Um, the same week, you can attend the Riverbend District Day Camp at Burris Park in Kingsburg. That is June 16th through 19th, and it is a twilight camp from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m., and the cost is $7. Um, the Fres or $70, not $7. The Fresno North Stake um, is offering their day camp that same week. That is at the Stake Center on Peach Avenue on June 16th through 19th also a twilight camp from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And then the following week, you can attend camps with the San Joaquin District at the Sierra Sky Park Airport in Fresno, June 22nd to June 26th, a twilight camp from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m., the cost again $70. The Fresno East Stake is taking place, um, their camp is taking place at the Clovis Rodeo Grounds, June 23rd through 27th from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then the last camp offered by the council would be the Live Oak District Camp in Porterville at the LDS Church in Porterville, June 23rd through 27th, 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., the cost being $65. The theme from National that each district in the council will be following is Take Flight. Each camp will be incorporating various aspects of flight including planes, rockets, birds, insects, superheroes, and local superheroes like our law enforcement and fire departments. With the new Cub Scout program being rolled out on June 1st, each camp is using the new program model for their camps. It is a great way for the boys to be exposed to the exciting new program in a very fun way. Each camp will still be offering fun activities like archery, BB shooting, and crafts, but depending on the camp, your boys will get to experience some other really cool things. For instance, Live Oak Visalia Cub Scouts will travel in small groups to the Visalia Airport to experience things like airplane refueling, a tour of the Skylife helicopter, the airport rescue vehicle, and much, much more. Boys attending the San Joaquin District Camp will spend the entire week at the Sierra Sky Park Airport, and boys from the Riverbend District Riverbend District will have a, a helicopter stopping by their camp. Each camp has fun and exciting activities taking place. These are just a few of the examples. All of the camps are also very cognizant of the severe drought we're experiencing in the valley and will not be offering any water activities, but will keep the boys engaged and hydrated. Last year, council-wide, we had 920 Cub Scouts participate in the various day camps. This year, our goal is 980. Right now, all of the camps are on track to meet or exceed their numbers from last year, but all camps would like to grow and increase over last year, so sign up your boys for day camp. It's only a month and a half, and a, a month and a half away. A few camps worth noting in the attendance discussion are Thunderbird, Live Oak Porterville, and Live Oak Visalia. Thunderbird has already exceeded their attendance from last year, but would love to have more boys sign up for camp. Live Oak Porterville has matched their attendance from last year and is enthousi enthusiastically planning for more. They have actually partnered with the Girl Scouts and are offering a co-ed day camp this year. While the camp is co-ed, they are still planning their program around the new Cub Scout program, and the Girl Scouts will be participating in all the activities the boys participate in and will be adjusting their program to incorporate the boys' requirements. Live Oak Visalia exceeded their registrations over last year um, as of the early bird deadline of April 1st, but still needs 60 more boys to meet their goal. Visalia listened to the PACs in their district and moved their camp back one week to accommodate the various school districts and charter schools that end a week later than Visalia Unified. All of the districts started planning their camps back in January or earlier and have been meeting monthly to ensure the national standards are upheld and that we are offering exciting camps for your boys. Each year, the camps struggle to find enough volunteers to run camp. In the end, it always works out, but we rely on you and your Boy Scout aged boys to volunteer and take part in the fun. The sooner you volunteer, the sooner we can assign roles and the camp directors can experience a little less stress, wondering if they will be able to offer all the fun stuff they have planned. I've never had a volunteer leave that didn't enjoy their time at camp. 
It really is a lot of fun, and just seeing the excitement on their faces of those cute Cub Scouts make it all worthwhile. Please contact your local, local camp directors and find out what you can do to help. You won't be disappointed. Should you have any questions about day camp, you can contact your local Scout Service Center or district executive. We look forward to seeing your boys take flight at Cub Scout Day Camp this year. Thank you for your time. Hello, everyone. This is Mike Foster, the district director for the San Joaquin District. And during the summer, many of you know me as the business manager for Camp Chiwanaki. Camp Chiwanaki will be opening to campers on Sunday, June 7th, and will operate for nine weeks through August 8th. Over this coming summer, we hope to host over 3,500 scouts and over 800 adult leaders. The programs that you love, such as fishing, boating, shooters, shooting sports, wilderness survival, and various nature excursions will still be offered, alongside new innovative programs, such as robotics merit badge, the very popular welding merit badge, and exciting activities like knife and tomahawk throwing. There are still opportunities to attend Camp Chiwanaki this summer if you are not already signed up. Please go to our council website, seqbsa.org, or to chiwanaki.com to check on site scheduling and availability. You can also contact our office and speak with Joseph for any scheduling questions or contacts. If you're already signed up, we please ask that you check those websites for the prerequisite requirements that have been released. We ask that you work independently with your boys prior to arrival to camp to be able to complete as many of the prerequisites, if not all of them, before they arrive to camp. Also on that website, you will find the most up-to-date leader's guide. We actually just released an update to our leader's guide today, so please be on the lookout for a news release about that, and please go and download it and read through to notice the changes. You'll see the changes actually cover the prerequisites that I mentioned, as well as costs associated with things like handicraft merit badges, as well as a few typos that we caught thanks to some help from our teacher leader friends. If you have any questions prior to arrival to camp, please feel free to call us at the scout office and you can speak to either myself or to our camp director, Jason Cruz. Questions can cover the variety of program offerings, registration questions, or in, uh, questions about our dining hall opportunities and special needs diets. Our goal this year, and as is every year, is to put the best customer service experience on your awesome outdoor program at Camp Chiwanaki. We hope that everyone who attends us will have a great time and will leave raving about the great time they had at Camp Chiwanaki. We hope to see you all this summer, and we thank you very much for listening. Hi, I'm Lorenzo Rios. And my name is Meg Glazer. And we are representing NYLT. NYLT stands for National Youth Leadership Training. And Meg will, here will go ahead and describe to you what you should expect, of course. So up at NYLT, everyone forms patrols on the first day. Uh, at NYLT, after you're in your patrols, they stress working with the patrol method as you go through the four stages of team development, forming, storming, norming, and performing. Forming is, as you will learn, when you have low skills but high enthusiasm and you're excited to get started. Storming, or a little bit later on in the course, you will have dropping enthusiasm because you're realizing that your skills aren't quite as high as you think they should be. Norming is when your enthusiasm and your skills begin to rise. And performing, which we all hope you will be by the end of the week, is when you have high skill and high enthusiasm. The NYLT staff will guide you guys through the week and help you guys to learn all of the skills that we are teaching. Our goal is that after walking away from this course, young men and women should be able to walk away with the confidence to create positive change in their troops, units, and in their communities by giving them the skills they will need. And even women and ladies can benefit from this. If you're registered in a crew, you're highly encouraged to go. Now, the other requirements for scouts is that they have to be uh, 13 years old in the first class. So if you're interested in going, the dates are Monday, June 22nd through Saturday, June 27th. Uh, to apply, you can go online at sequoiaseqbsa.org. Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, or you can pick up an application at the scout office. And we hope to see you all there.
<clears throat> well, hello everyone and thank you for taking time out of your schedule to listen to us talk about our various programs. My name is Pat Myers and I'm this year's course director for Woodbatch. I want you to know this year's staff has been working diligently on preparing an adult leadership training experience for you that is second to none. The first reason to attend Woodbatch is to learn business leadership skills. The syllabus for Woodbatch was written in part by Ken Blanchard, a noted author and management expert. You may know his best-selling book, The One Minute Manager. Your unit is much the same as any small business, good businesses. Skills are necessary to make everything run smoothly. The skills you will learn will go a long way to managing your volunteers, employees, scouts, and expectations. Some of the items you'll learn are listening to learn, communications, conflict management, project planning, team building, and team dynamics. This is business training. There's a good chance your company will let you attend without burning your vacation days. They may even help pay for your tuition and expenses for being here. I also have a letter that may help you convince your employer um, to let you come to Woodbatch and have some uh, more information about reasons that will affect the company. Well, the second reason to attend uh, Woodbatch is to learn scout leadership skills. Not everyone was grown up in a, in a scout troop. Reading the manual only goes so far. Uh, not everyone is a natural leader. Some have been thrown into the fire for scouting position and they need leadership skills. During Woodbatch, you are placed in patrols to si simulate the patrol experience in the scout unit. You work as a team to accomplish tasks. You will learn very quickly what, is, what the expectations are for scouts in a Boyd-led unit. Your understanding you will understand leadership and its applications in scouting. The third reason to attend is scout parent skills. Woodbadge will enable you to understand more about scouting and understand your son's advancement because he will have, <clears throat> you will have learned what he is expected to learn and accomplish. You will share many of the same experiences and challenges that he will as a scout by participating in a Woodbadge course. And the last reason, it's a lot of fun. You will form bonds with other participants and staffers who come from all areas of the council. Men and women you can call upon on a moment's notice if you need help or advice. It's the ultimate support group. You become more in touch with the traditions of scouting going all the way back to Lord Baden-Powell. He created the first Woodbatch course and was taught over 90 years ago. So one of the questions I get asked is who can attend Woodbatch? Well, all and any registered scouter. Uh, we want you to be trained for your current scout position. So this is, includes Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, Varsity Scouts, and Venturing. So if you have any questions, please go to the website and select the Training tab. And you'll find out more information there. My contact information is on there also. I'd be glad to hear from you. You can call me at home, send me an email. Thank you. Good evening. This is uh, Richard Schneider, the Council Commissioner. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, uh, just a few ideas about Roundtable and be followed by Scott Mears, who's going to follow up with the training on that. Um, all these great things that you just heard about, uh, if you've been attending the, your district Roundtable, you would already have uh, known that they were coming up and, and all the details of, of what's going on. So I'm encouraging you to, to, to attend your district uh, Roundtables. Uh, Thunderbird, that's the second Thursday of each month uh, at the United Methodist Church in Madeira. Uh, in San Joaquin, it's the second Thursday also of each month at the LDS Fresno State Center, uh, both those at 7 p.m. At Riverbend, it's the uh, third Thursday, uh, even odd month. Uh, even month is in Hanford, odd month is in Kingsburg. Um, in Live Oak, um, it's the second Thursday in Visalia, uh, for those in Porterville who are unable to uh, attend the Visalia roundtables, they do hold quarterly roundtables in Porterville. Um, again, like I said, this is very important that you go, especially with the new Cub Scout program. Um, there should be a representative from every unit attend the roundtable, whether it be a, a, a venture or, or, or Cub Scout or uh, a Boy Scout unit. 
Um, and there will be great things for them to understand and, and learn when they're there. Um, Roundtable is, is th the biggest way that our council gets training out to our leaders. And uh, under our new uh, council long-term goals and short-term goals, uh, getting new leaders trained is key to, to making that happen. And I'm going to turn that over to Scott because he is going to be able to tell you how that's going to happen at Roundtable. Thank you, Richard. This is Scott Mears, Council Training Chair. Good evening to all you uh, scouters out there in Sequoia Council. I'm going to talk to you for just a minute about uh, our plan uh, to make sure that new leaders get trained. Uh, as many of you know, our, our new council president has put a mandate on the council training committee to make sure new leaders get trained within 30 days of approval sign up uh, and completion of their, uh, their paperwork. And this is how we're going to go about that. So uh, please make notes as you go through, and, and if you have questions uh, as we go along, please send them in uh, right now, and we'll try and address them at the end of this, uh, at the end of this discussion. We're going to utilize Roundtable as our, as our base. So what we would hope and what we are asking you to do is if you have new leaders in any new units, that you would get them to Roundtable. And when they get to Roundtable, we're going to have district training chairs attending uh, that meeting and they will take them after uh, the opening exercises under their wing and they will take them aside and they will actually begin the training. But the goal is to get as much training that night done but to walk out of that meeting with a plan for completion. So they don't expect to get it all done because what they are going to be delivering is leadership specific training. That's a new formatted course and it is discussion based. So, uh, there, and there's no way that they can complete it in, in one evening. The plan is that your district training chair will assign a person that he selected to be in charge and make sure whoever that new leader that shows up, he will make sure that that person is assigned to make, to get that training complete within that 30 day period. So, round table will happen, new leaders will come, They'll begin the training and they'll walk out knowing new people, having started their training, and have a plan to complete that coursework for leadership specific training. They will also walk out with a plan to attend Introduction to Outdoor Leadership Skills. We're going to offer this course many more times than we have in the past. We've offered it twice a year in the spring and fall so far. We plan to offer as many as eight times a year now. So you'll be able to very quickly find a time where your new leader can not only get his coursework done, but hopefully very quickly get into IOLS and be qualified as fully trained. Now keep in mind, here in Sequoia Council, we don't believe in fully trained. You're never fully trained, even if you have one of those cute little patches on your sleeve. Training is ongoing. Everything we do in scouting is about training. You're, you're training your boys every time you meet with them, and we're trying to train leaders every time we meet with them. We hope that you have lifelong leadership skills as your, uh, as your goal also. So if you have questions about any of that, now, obviously, what if you can't get to roundtable? It's going to be, let me just hit that before you ask that question. If you contact your district training chair or if you contact me, we'll make arrangements to meet with your new leader and circumvent the roundtable situation. We'll get them assigned, we'll get them taught, and we'll get that 30-day period met. If you have any other questions, write them in, send them in now. Thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. Hey, it's uh, John Richards, your CEO and Scott Executive. I hope everyone in the room and, and out on the airwaves can tell how much excitement there is with some of this new technology we're using and a new way of us getting together if you're from long distance away or otherwise. There's also a real new spirit in Sequoia Council. Uh, Membership-wise, I'm proud and happy to say to you, you know, we do measure our membership, that we are seeing increases in the Boy Scout membership, venturing membership, exploring. We're a little bit behind in Cub Scouts. We know how busy young families are and how complicated lives are today versus a couple generations ago but we're going to catch up with our Cub Scouts as well. So I'm going to go over a, a laundry list of things here for you just to keep in mind. 
Regarding Cub Scout membership, if you haven't seen some of our new banners yet that say Joint Scouting and it's got both offices' phone numbers and our website, please avail yourself of one of those banners. We had 125 of them made, and if your school will allow you to put one up on the chain link fence with zip ties for a year or more, ask permission, get one from us. They're free of charge, and put one up. If there's some other place that you think a banner should go, we'll do that as well. About uh, 25 of the banners are also bilingual, and they can be used where needed. And we can buy more if we need more. Cub Scout membership. This spring we started a new initiative that if a boy joins your Cub Scout pack and pays the national membership dues, which are prorated at $24 a year, and hopefully pays the dues for your pack, that boy will receive instantly a Zebco 202 rod and reel and tackle kit. We have 400 of them in the office, and they're here for you guys free of charge for new Cub Scouts. And if we need to buy more of those, we'll do that as well. You can see we're pretty serious about getting back on track with Cub Scout membership, and kudos to our Boy Scouts, Adventurers, and Explorers. Regarding uh, some dates to keep in mind with the Order of the Arrow, this is their 100th anniversary, and there's a National Order of the Arrow conference in the Midwest, and leading up to that is what they're calling the Arrow Tour. This will be a group of National Order of the Arrow people with activities and displays, and we're lucky enough to have them coming to Camp Chewanake on Saturday, Saturday, July the 11th, 2015. Their actual program will run from about 2 in the afternoon to 7 in the evening. Feel free to come up if you want to camp overnight. We've got wall tents there. You could bring your own tent. We'll feed you free of charge. Bring the community. Bring other people, other scouters, Cub Scouts, anybody who wants to be there. It should be a great time. And our thanks to Michael Feast uh, for kind of leading the charge on this particular thing. Regarding uh, the long-range plan of Sequoia Council, we really have set out on an adventure and a journey, frankly, to make Sequoia Council the best council in America. This year we have seven goals that we have enumerated, and we're working hard to reach each and every one of those goals. And as you can imagine, some of the things include Cub Scout membership, trained leaders, all the things that the speakers before me have, uh, have, have talked about. Um, another program that will be coming up in 2017 is the National Scout Jamboree at the Summit in West Virginia. Sign-ups are right around the corner, and so if you are a scout, a Boy Scout, who will be 12 by that summer, you are eligible to sign up and go to the Jamboree. Check out our website, and we also have forums in both service centers. Turning back to Camp Chewanake, the cabins at Camp Chewanake were finished in September. We have 11 cabins, one that serves as our camp office during the summer, but a cabin to camp in during the rest of the year. Again, go to our website, secbsa.org, and click on the icon, the cabins at Chewanake. They're available for rent, and here's a secret you don't get unless you're on this webinar. If you'd like to be a camp host for a weekend, you can stay in the camp office, which has sleeping accommodations and a flush toilet. And it will cost you nothing, and you'll just help us manage the camp for that weekend for other renters. So check out the cabins at Camp Chewanake. They really are going to be great. They'll even have some available to scout families during the summer. The staff will occupy some of them, but other cabins will still be available for rent this summer. Finally, when we get some more money raised and we're working hard at it, the dining hall, we will break ground and we will build the new dining hall at Camp Chewanake. It's going to be located where Yosemite has been over these years. It's already marked. You can go look at the surveyor stake. We're moving Yosemite campsite to where Scoutcraft currently is, and Scoutcraft will move to an area adjacent to the archery range. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for a great summer and a great fall here in Sequoia Council. Thankfully, I'm the last speaker before Tim Brocks, who will have Q&A. Thanks for tuning in. Could you just advance the slides, Michael?
Good. So on this slide here, we have an email address, uh, sequoia at scouting.org. This will be um, an alternate. Uh, you, can, you can either uh, send a question through the uh, software with, that you're logged in on, or you can send an email to that um, address. And we have in the room all of the presenters. Uh, we've got a few other people as well, uh, including um, uh, folks that will be participating in the uh, Jamboree um, leadership next year. So at this time, we, we're open to questions on all the items that were mentioned or any other um, council questions or anything that uh, would be helpful. So I do have a couple questions from the chat room. The first one, uh, El Rios asks, with busy schedules, are there any plans to leverage more virtual training via e-meetings like this? Scott. Uh, we haven't talked about doing uh, uh, e-training here. Uh, in other words, internally into the Sequoia Council, that's a great idea that I think we should explore. Um, I know that National is, uh, is looking at more opportunities to do uh, training online, and if you go and log into your My Scouting uh, account, then you will, you will see all of the e-learning opportunities. Right now, all the Cub training that you could ever possibly take is available online. I don't believe that they will ever do things like leadership specific training for scouting, varsity, or venturing online because it's too detailed and takes too long. Uh, outdoor leadership skills, you're never going to cook eggs online. So <laughs> don't look for that to happen in the near future. Uh, other than that, I'm really uh, interested in having any conversations anybody else has about what we could do. And uh, just last month, Riverbend District, so Hanford, Reedley, all of them, actually held their roundtable through a webinar. So you could actually log in and watch their roundtable through this uh, GoToMeeting system as well. We'd uh, also uh, value separately from this uh, uh, webinar tonight, we'd value your feedback about how this could be done better, what, would, uh, what improvements there would be, and, and how, how you found this as a mechanism for um, the equivalent of a roundtable council-wide roundtable. All right, so the next question comes from Chris Davis. It says, whatever happened to the commercial that was filmed at the zoo earlier this year, and do we get to see it? I haven't yet seen it, but I'm going to in May, and I'll bring something back. <laughs> so our council executive uh, has pointed out that, that that will be, that we haven't seen it yet, but he's going to see it first, and he'll share it with us if right. we can. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Mark Chadwick <laughs> wishes to know what are the details of the upcoming camp roll? Well, <laughs> since we have one of his committee members here, why don't uh, we just turn the microphone over to uh, Fritz Glazer. I believe that was a loaded question from Mark. Was, was that really from Mark or yeah, were you just trying to get me? Okay. No, it was from Mark. <clears throat> Hi, this is, uh, Fritz, this is Fritz Glazer. I'm the San Joaquin District Camping Chair and I work for Mark Chadwick, the, uh, Chadwick, the Sequoia Council Camping Chair. We're in the process of putting together a Camp Roll, which is a council-wide uh, camp out that's going to be at Kearney Park um, this upcoming October, um, October 23rd through 25th. It's going to be a great event. The last time we did a Camp Roll was in 2010, uh, coinciding with the centennial anniversary of scouting. Um, we are going to hold this uh, event for Cub Scouts. Boy Scouts, Ventures, Varsity Scouts, Explorers, uh, the entire scouting program will be able to camp and participate with age-appropriate activities. We have uh, basically half of Kearney Park that the county uh, is allowing us to use for this. There's going to be a service project. Our um, theme is Spirit of Service, which is to uh, kind of piggyback on the enthusiasm for the Order of the Arrows centennial uh, or century of service uh, that they're celebrating this year. So it should be a great event. If you have questions, there's information about this on the council website, uh, or you can contact me or Mark or uh, any of the fine folks here. Thank you, Chris. Next question? All right, next question comes from uh, Beth Arendelle. It's, Some parents have expressed concern about the Cub Scout camp at Chandler Airport. What steps are being taken to ensure there's enough shade? I, you want me to handle that one since it's my district yeah. one? It's actually not at Chandler Airport. It's at Sierra Sky Park, but the same kind of questions I know will arise. And we are actually going to have the council itself has shade structures that we're providing, and we'll also be getting more from an outside organization. American Legion has offered to help us up with some of their shade structures. 
And uh, the actual Sierra Sky Park has a mobile, uh, what do they call it, like hydration station. It's basically a mister they can move around where we need it. We can have a cooling off station as well as uh, stations inside their building. So we will be making sure that keeping kids hydrated and safe is very much at the top of our priorities. Thank you, Michael. I think that's important. I think our, our uh, parents will be very concerned and, and uh, glad to hear about that. All right, let's see here. Uh... Not really a question. Online training is one method from El Rios. However, the collaborative aspect of meetings like go to meeting facilitate better attainment of learning outcomes. So as a common follow on to the training for that question. Uh, let's see here. All right. Question. Probably would have good. Paul D. and Joan L. Smith say, how do we get a council instructor out to our troop for committee challenge training? Oh, <laughs> that's really easy. Uh, yeah, just ask. So if you don't have a district training chair, and you may not, you can uh, send an email to me or, or contact Mike or Erica, um, and we will make arrangements to make that happen. We can do that really quick and have. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's an email address? No, nothing. Sequoia, Sequoia, Sequoia yeah. at uh, scouting.org. Yeah, so run it through Sequoia. All of, our, all of your district executive email addresses are also on the website along with our phone numbers. Please call us, and we will get an instructor out to you. Awesome. And Scott mentioned that we do committee training and our days of training now, too. Yes, absolutely. That's important. Uh, what John is saying is that uh, in the spring and the fall, when we do days of training, that's a standard uh, a training class that we're offering. And that's the last question. Okay, oh, can, well, can you have a browser open there? Um, can you go to the uh, www.scouting.org forward slash program update? Yes, give me a second. Okay, it was mentioned... Uh, I'll move it. I'll move it over. That's fine. So we're going to show you the um, uh, new Cub Scout Adventure website uh, from the National, and we want to make sure that you get a chance to see that. So I think I can do it just like. Well, we think we're going to do it. Yeah. There, did you had it pop up for a second? You did. <laughs> While we're waiting for that again, I'll just repeat that uh, web address in case you didn't get it before. If you've got your pencil out, it's www.scouting.org forward slash uh, program update. There's no space between program update. I typed it into my browser that way, and there's a very a useful, um, uh, and they can see it now? Mm -hmm. Or it's just sneaking that across? Or no, I said, Here, I can fix it now. Make it a little easier. Now that I know what I was doing wrong. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's, there it is. That's showing up now. It's showing up on my screen. And if you scroll down on that, Michael, you can see the uh, handbooks. They're there. There's PDFs of them. Uh, a lot of the material that you, that you uh, buy in the Scout office, you can also get in PDFs and... Uh, and uh, display them on your um, on your uh, iPad or uh, or your computer or or your any other um, electronic device, and that sometimes is helpful. Allison, is there anything else you wanted to that? Uh, well, we got that up there to show them. The transition guidelines documents and the uh, questions right in the middle. FAQs. That one. FAQs. That's like a 40-page document, just took full of all kinds of questions and answers that people have asked, both uh, traditional and LDS, and that's a great document to go to, and it's got all kinds of questions and answers that you can think of. And then as you scroll down towards the bottom, there's a tradition, a transition document for LDS uh, chartered units that's specific to um, LDS units. So. The transition guidelines for LDS and traditional units, and that FAQ document. Those are probably the three key units, three key documents that you will find useful. Thank you, Allison. Any other, any other questions? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Daphne uh, would like you to know that Cub Scout books are available. Come by both Scout shops to pick them up. The new ones. The new, the new ones. Yes. Perfect. Yes, I heard. That was going to be May first, but they've arrived. They're actually, here now. No, they've arrived, and they're gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> Great. 
Excellent. Um, well, we're somewhat ahead of schedule, uh, but we won't keep everyone. We know you're busy. We appreciate everyone uh, signing on. We uh, appreciate an opportunity to, uh, to, to uh, converse with you. Uh, we hope this has been helpful. We'd uh, be interested in your feedback uh, as to how we could improve and any other topics that should be covered. And again, uh, thank you for signing on with us tonight.